a pair of shoes. Hiya, it's Wendy here again from Toon Pish Crafts and I hope you're doing okay. Today, I don't know if you saw a few weeks ago that I did a resin review on the resin colour deep cast casting resin. And I put it in the shoe mould, this one, that I have actually put the bow in, and I put it in the pressure pot. Now I ran out of resin so I couldn't do it again, not in the pressure pot if you see what I mean. Now a lot of people don't have pressure pots, I didn't have one for a long time and that's completely understandable. Why would you spend out for something when you don't necessarily need it? Well, I don't think this product needs a pressure pot. And I did say in that video that I'd wish I had a s'more to try it without the pressure pot. Well, Resin Colour saw that and they said, try it again. <laughs> so they gave me another lot to try. So I'm going to do it again, shoe mould without the pressure pot. So this is custom cast, deep cast casting resin from Resin Colour as I did in the previous video with the shoe and I'll link that just above. I've already done the UV resin bow as you can see there and I've followed the directions for mixing the resin up and I'm just going to pour it in quite slowly so that I don't add bubbles to it. And as before, the shoe mould decides to flay out, so I'm going to peg it up to stop it from falling apart. So I fill up the mould to the top. Now I do leave a little room at the top of this because I need to move it over to the back of my worktop so it's not in my way. So I top it up once it's in position for a box to go over the top to keep it safe for the next 72 hours. So what with work and everything, it was four days later before I could get back into my craft room and get on with this project. And I'm just showing you, though it has shrunk back, it hasn't shrunk back as much as it did when it was in the pressure pot. So I'm going to take the peg off and the little plastic stick out from the centre. And I realise that now I've got a hole and that needs to be filled. So when I'm going to do the next layer or the last layer on the shoe, I'm going to have to fill that hole as well. Now a couple of people actually said that it would look good with a holographic colour in the base of the shoe rather than the black. So I thought this time that's what we're going to have to go for, the holographic film. And as luck would have it, I have another shoe that I can use as a template to cut round to get the shape that I need for the holographic film. The wonders will never see, say. So I'm just scoring round the outside of the shoe, obviously not touching the shoe, trying not to scratch the shoe in any way, so that I know where to cut with my scissors. As usual, I've speeded quite a lot of this up for you so that you don't have to sit through the mundane parts and it's a little bit more interesting to watch, I'm hoping. And then of course I realised that the shoe mould is actually designed for a specific foot, so the... <laughs> The sole is a different shape on both sides, but it's no problem, I just trim it up a little bit more. So I've got to take off the film protective sheeting that's on both sides of this plastic. I only actually thought it was on one side at one point, so I'm glad I checked. I'm just deciding which side to use the golden side or the blue side and I think I prefer the blue so that's the side I'm going to go for. Checking it fits. Now this resin is Vista 1. It's a new resin to Vista. It's a one to one ratio and I thought I'd give it a little go on the top of this shoe. Not for any other reasons other than the fact that I really want to try this one out and I will be doing more with this resin to give it a good try at a later date but for the moment I have it I wanted to try it and that's what I decided to do so I'm pouring a little bit on the top of the shoe just to cover the surface and the heel as well and I also need to put the micro brush down into the hole to fill that up as well and then I'm going to lay the film on top and try to do it in a way that it doesn't get any air trapped underneath it and not forgetting the little circle to go in the heel. Again, try not to get any air underneath it. 
and filling it up. Quick squirt with isopropanol alcohol and I leave it for 24 hours this time. Okay, so another 24 hours later and now I can actually demold the shoe and have a look. I've been waiting for this now for five days and I am so looking forward to seeing what it's like. Okay, I can't see any bubbles. Must be some bubbles there somewhere. There are some bubbles trapped underneath the film, but there's not in the main shoe. So now I have a pair of shoes, one black, one blue. Neither of them have bubbles in at all, not one bubble. I am so, so amazed at this resin. I know it takes 72 hours to cure, but if you're doing deep pours and you don't have a pressure pot, it's definitely one to consider, don't you think? It's gorgeous, completely crystal clear, no issues whatsoever. A pair of shoes <laughs> anyway thanks very much for watching this one i hope you enjoyed it i hope it's helped you in some way come back and see me again next week you never know what i'm going to be up to i'll put some steels up at the end and have a great week bye for now still looking for those bubbles they've got to be here somewhere there must be a bubble in there somewhere can you see a bubble i can't see a bubble i can't see a bubble in that at all wow Cause you